And let's play that up. Let's play that up because that's a good point. Yeah. Now, what he what he said is that he don't want to use God as the scapegoat. Because basically, if something happens, people will say, well, God just allowed it to happen. Yeah. Which technically he does allow everything to go on because he's God. If he wants to intervene and stop something, he will. So, 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 so the point that you're trying to make is the fact that if you say there's a consequence, you don't want to say God allowed it. You just want to say if you said there's a consequence, yeah, that's good. which which that's right. Maybe that word allowed. Uh -huh. I think it's appropriate now. Uh -huh. This real word. I, don't now, like I think it's appropriate uh -huh. in that if he did not allow it to happen, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen, and that's why. I, and that's why I said stop it or or let it happen. Uh -huh. You could use a let the word let in place uh -huh. of allow, but God controls everything. Uh -huh. And that's why even today, because this world is so evil, and this is the this is the this is the world of the prince of this air, of the prince of this world, Satan. He allows things to happen, but he allows it to happen based on our free sovereignty. See, he gives us sovereignty to make choices. I always tell kids when I go and speak to kids that your destiny is the result of your next decision. See, if you whatever you decide to do, there's going to be a consequence. For every action, there's a reaction. So what I'm trying to get you to see is that when you believe in faith and grace, understand that your works will be punished. Sometimes it may not be what you think. It. Sometimes it may not be harsh enough. Sometimes it may. But understand this. When it comes to your initial salvation, your works and your sin has nothing to do with that. And that's the whole point. Your works and your sin is based on faith alone and what he did. I mean, your, your salvation is based on him alone, not you and your sin. Because he died while we were yet sinners. So he knew we were sinning against him because he died while we were yet sinners. So our works has nothing to do with losing our salvation. I would like to change that word for a minute, if we will. <laughs> but, yeah, but that, that's the same thing. Because if, if you look at it, let's, let's look at it from this standpoint. When, when we trust the shed blood of Christ, we immediately receive salvation. Our spirit man is sealed. We receive heaven as a present possession. So no sin can affect our spiritual standing in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. But it can affect your physical body. Mm -hmm. And that's what the allowing that your physical body will be punished. Mm -hmm. Because what you do now, it doesn't affect your spiritual standing. It affects your spiritual, I mean, your physical standing. And that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. And that's why Paul says in Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. But people leave off the last 10 words. <laughs> There's no condemnation to them that in Christ Jesus what? Who walk according, according to the spirit, not after the flesh. Mm -hmm. When you walk after the flesh, there may be some condemnation. Mm -hmm. yeah. There may be some consequences. Yeah. But when you walk according to the spirit, there's no more condemnation because we're in Christ. See, but don't get it twisted. That's why it's a sanctification. That's the process. I had somebody tell me that salvation is a process. How can salvation be a process when we don't have to do that? Jesus. <laughs> right? The process is the daily walk because we have to do it. That's the process. But initial salvation, he did all the work. That, that process has been done. If it was a process, it was done on the cross. But today, initial justification is not a process. But for them, and James, what he's saying, it, it is a process because it has to be faith, then works. Mm -hmm. Now, notice this. Abraham believed God in what chapter of Genesis? 15. 15. He performed the work of Isaac in what chapter? 15 plus 1 equals 22. 7 is the spiritual perfection. So what did James say? Since thou hast faith brought with his works, and by works faith was made what? Perfect. It took seven chapters. 7 is the number of spiritual perfection. Right? Question. I saw. I saw you too, Jay. I get to you. I just want to ask if um, Deacon Burt. I mean, Brother Burt. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that God allowed good things in our life to happen? What I think is, I know that God has things reserved to release both good and bad if He will. But I think He chooses to stay out of matters because of our free will. So the word allow is like, if I do something wrong and I say he allowed the consequences, 
it's like I see, I vividly see him saying, see, I told you. You know what I mean? And I don't, the word allow, that's, it has strength. And then if you do something wrong and something happens to somebody bad in your family, I don't want people under false pretense saying, see, God allowed that. So the word allow can be so dangerous in that regard. And, and, and but even with that, technically he does allow it because yeah, if he didn't he want doesn't something allow it as hands it. on. He allows as if a, as him being God. By, just like the Old Testament, when things are happening, it, the Bible says by chance. Yeah, and it's happening. Yeah, not yeah. God allowed it. And, and, and that's why that's a good point because that's why it says that God reigns on the just yes. and the what yeah. unjust. Yeah. Yeah. See, because it's not based on you and what you do. Sometimes God just has things that He wants for you. And if it's for you, it's for you. So it doesn't matter. Sometimes God will release things upon you and allow things to happen in your life based on his will. He'll intervene in your life based on faith. Mm-hmm. According to his will. That's why when you pray, you have to, that's why when it says pray in the spirit, I had somebody tell me that means pray in tongues. Mm-hmm. No, what that what that means, praying in the spirit is means the spirit is making intercessions with groaning that cannot be uttered because we don't know what to pray for. So when you pray in the spirit, you're praying in God's will. That's what that means. So when you pray in God's will by faith, God then will come down and intervene in your situation. He will do that. Mm-hmm. But majority of the time, what God has, He allows things to go. Why do you think He got bomb, people blowing up stuff, wars and going? Why? Because of the sinful nature of man. You got people murdering your children. Is that God's own? God's hands on? No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. He's a, okay. I see. Yeah, that's See, why he's that's, allowing, that's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. He, he allowing it generally, but it's not his hands on. Like I didn't allow this kid. Exactly. 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 Okay. That's what the misconception is going to be in that word. Okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because he allowed. Ultimately, he allowed Satan to be the prince of power. Ever. Right. Uh-huh. So therefore, that's deemed to him. That's deemed to him, and that's why the, the wickedness that goes on this world is of Satan and not of God. Right. So, so I want you to see so that it's about Satan did it instead of saying God allowed. And, and then even yeah. that, I don't even want people to think that Satan do everything. Because when I ran that red light, that wasn't Satan, that was me. You see what I'm saying? So, so and, and, and you see that even the same way. Don't think that the devil does everything. Because when you ran that red light, that was just me. That's right. Man, Satan was talking to me. I just, I had to be somewhere, so I ran this light. You know what I'm saying? So, it would so, be safe to say God allowed that. Well, that okay, I, and I see what you're saying there. And I see that. <laughs> and, and the thing, and the thing about it is that, and what we get to, to to bring this back to the scriptures, because it always goes back to what's said in the scripture. Mm-hmm. Initial justification is by faith alone. But what James is saying is that initial justification has to be by faith plus works. Mm-hmm. So that's how you know the book of James is not talking to you today. Faith by faith without works is what? Dead. We used to I used to preach that. We used to always love that scripture. Right? But what but and most preachers will say, well, what that's saying is that if you have faith, you'll work. No, no, no. But 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 how does our work come? When I preach that message, the work of faith, how does our work come? As God performs it what? In yeah. us, there's a difference. Well, my whole question is, if he had died for our sins, knowing that he, that we were going to commit sins, uh-huh. being that the reason that he died for us, uh-huh. why would he even allow punishment to come into the game? Because he has to punish sin. And, that, and that's why I said he punishes sin eternally already. That's why you don't have to worry about whether you're going to receive eternal life. So that means that we're putting a title on sin, making sin in, in its own separate call? As far as what? As if how you just said that he has to punish sin. He has to punish. That's what it, when God initially punished sin for every man, He put everything that that you would ever do on Christ. But because you live every day in a sinful flesh and you make sinful decisions, the cause and effect of that just is gonna, just going to happen. You see what I mean? Because you make if you walk out in front of a bus, you're going to get hit. That's just a cause and effect. God allowed it. You, 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 you see, you see, see and, and he's using the word. And that word allowed as he's yeah. thinking about it. I think we're looking at it from two different perspectives. Because God is God. If he wanted to call this world up, he would do that. And so he could, and really he could stop the bus if he wanted to. See, but and so when we say allow, we're using it on that pretense. But I understand what you're saying that somebody else will use it and say God allowed evil. You see, but God can't be associated with evil. 
You see what I mean? So, so to answer that question, that's what happens. That's why the sanctification is the process. Because we may not always do everything right according to God's righteousness in our daily walk. But that does not keep us from receiving eternal life. Right. See, that's the issue. The justification of eternal life is the issue. I think what I'm just feeling is I, sh I, I don't feel like punish punishment should come against us if you already died for our sins and knew that there is no perfect man yes, on earth. I, I see it. I see it. And, and, and what happens is you're thinking that basically how can you punish us twice? Double jeopardy. Double jeopardy. That's what you're looking at. But but it's not double jeopardy because this was for eternal life. You received that. There's nothing that can take that away. Your sin does not take eternal life away because then that makes what he did of none effect. See, but now when you walk according to the flesh, you're going to reap of the flesh. When you walk according to the spirit, Galatians 6, you'll reap of the spirit. So the more you uh, walk according to the spirit, the more you'll reap the things of God. The more you die in the word, rightly divided, the more it's profitable to you. If I say I have faith in Jesus Christ and don't read my word and don't do anything according to God's righteousness, will I still go to heaven? Yeah. yeah. You sure? Say it again. You say it. If I believe in Jesus Christ and I don't pick up my Bible at all, go on to heaven. that I said that because most religions or religious people will tell you, you got to do something other than believe. And really, you don't. All you have to do is believe. Amen. Um, just to add on to what she said, uh, it's not so much, it's, it's a process. And when you, it's not so much of the double jeopardy, but we have choices now. And it's not so much that you're being punished for your sin, but just like uh, spiritualized for a child, if you never correct them in the behavior that are wrong, that is wrong, they'll never be able to identify which is right and which is wrong. So it's not so much that he's punishing you for doing sin, he's getting you kind of wake up call. And like he said, the more you indulge in the Bible, the more you grow in him, and your decisions are gonna shift from doing those things that are wrong rather than That's the things right. that are right. Yeah. And also when you're saying um, that God allowed it, he does allow it. he has that power because he's the same God that can stop time. So it does, it is a time of God allowing it. Kind of piggybacks on what she said, he allows it for we can, so that we can understand, like that red light situation. We know better because I've had road rage really, really bad. <laughs> and now I realize that there's a purpose behind the delay. So instead of me saying, oh, they need to get out of my way, I'd be like, you know what, God? It must be an accident or something yeah, like that that you prevent right. me from doing it. So right. as you indulge in him, your, your train of thought of saying God allowed it, you realize it's not an excuse saying God allowed it, but you realize it's a purpose behind it. Yeah. And you start using it's a purpose behind it rather than using yeah. God. And I think well, he just don't like the word because he don't want people to use it as an excuse. But that's why I said, shift, you, your, you, shift your words from saying God allowed it to there's a purpose behind yeah. it. Yeah, that's how I was trying to do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you say you like that. You say you like that. Yeah, he like that. So thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're talking about salvation. Like, what, what are you, what are you calling salvation? Like, what are you being saved from? And that's that's from eternal damnation. So once you uh -huh. believe and receive what Christ has done on the cross, uh -huh. that's propitiation for your sin on the uh -huh. cross. So now you receive salvation or the gift of heaven as a present possession. Uh -huh. But everything else. That, that doesn't guarantee you, you're not saved from consequences. Like, that doesn't mean if I shoot someone now, I won't go to jail. Yeah, that's right. Or if I, if I do some things, the, the, the consequences on this side won't occur to me. That's, that's not right. what you're saved there you from. Go. There you go. And, 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 and that's a very good point because it, it, it speaks of the, the, what we're trying to make and what the point that the Bible makes. Uh, because it's that when you do and break the law today, even though we're not under the law, God's law, we're still, Paul said in Romans 13, we still should do the laws of the land. So your consequences, when you break the laws of the land, you're subject to the laws of the land. You see that? But when it comes to eternalness, the law of the land has nothing to do with an eternal God. You see that? So now when it comes to eternal justification, initial salvation, I'm saved by the work he did. That's why it's so important to really understand what he did. Jesus. Listen, just think about this. 
I'm 30. There's, there's a wide variety of ages in here. Just my sin alone for 30 years was a lot on him. <laughs> so now take, so take your age, so take your age, and you know what you did. <laughs> All the stuff that you've done against God, and now put yours along with mine on him. Now take everyone that has ever lived and put their sin. Some people lived 900 years back then. That's a lot of sin. So take all of that and put it on him. Because it said he made him that knew no sin to be made sin that we may be made the righteousness in him. That's why we receive salvation as a present possession because he already took on an eternity. For the wages of sin is death, Romans 6 and 23. But the gift of God is eternal life. What does eternal mean? Forever. So once I receive it, it's forever. And that's by the grace of God. Uh, uh, go back with me to Hebrews real quick. Go back with me to Hebrews real quick. Hebrews chapter 11. I, I want to take you to some things. First of all, we know Paul didn't write this. Uh, what most people say he did, but I, I want to show you some things how their faith had to work, mm -hmm. right? I want to show you some things. Now, in Hebrews 11 is the hall of faith, like we call it, because all it speaks about is faith, right? Yes. So it, do you think before you read it, is it going to mention anybody that has faith without any works? If I'm taking you here, you can answer that. No. <laughs> Do you think that the book of Hebrews, the hall of faith, whenever it says that all these people had faith, there's always going to be a work behind it? That's right. Yeah, it's going to show you. Yeah. Let, 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 let's read it. Let's start at verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, what did Enoch do back here? It says the scripture in Genesis 5 says he walked with God. Mm -hmm. He walked with God. Mm -hmm. So he did something, right? Let's look at verse 7. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, Prepare. No, what does the scripture say? Not seen. Moved. 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 He did something. Moved with fear. Then what? Prepared an ark. He did something. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive one inheritance, what? Obey. Obey. He did and he what? Went out. There you go. Verse, let's go to verse number 9. Uh, well, it just says by faith, those things, this is what he did. He sojourned in the land in a strange place. How many people would go somewhere where you don't know what's going on? That's hard to do. Go to, the, go to verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered of Isaac. Notice, all of their instances of faith had to what? Work. Work. So that's why James can say faith what? Without works is dead. Because in their program, in the profane program, it is dead. Because they had to work. If you wanted your sins remitted, you didn't have to share the of Christ back here in this Old Testament. You had to go what? Sacrifice a bull or a goat. And that's how you said, God, I'm showing forth that I'm sorrowful and that I want your forgiveness. Today, we say, God, I believe you and I thank you for dying for that sin. I thank you for the forgiveness. Because he's already done it. Right? But, the, but we have to, the more we reap in the spirit, the more we sow in the spirit, the more we'll reap. Go back to Romans 4. And we'll close it out. But that, that, was, that was good talk. That was good, uh, good understanding. And it's always good because, I, hey, I don't know everything. I'm just teaching. Right? So, uh, so it's, a, it's always good to hear different viewpoints from different people Amen. so that we can all come to what, one common goal, which is the word of God. Amen. Right? Because this is our final authority. Um, where, where do we leave off? Romans 4. I told you. I want to get through it. Uh, verse 4. Now. Now. This, word, this verse starts off with what? Now. So that means before, whatever it said now was not an issue back then. Right? But now, to him that worketh, is the reward not reckoned of what? Grace. Grace, Grace but of what? Death. 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 Listen. 
if it's grace, it could be no more works. Paul says in Romans 11 and 6. Right? So basically what happens is a debt is what? Yo, yo, we, we got debt problems. We know that. Means. We, we get to know. That means we owe somebody, right? So if God saves you, if it says if, if, if salvation is reckoned to you or grace is reckoned to you because you work, that means what you said is God, you owe me this salvation. Oh, Jesus. Because I had to work for it. Yeah. Right? That's why it says the wages of sin. When you go to work, you're required a work wage. Uh -huh. As much sin as we do, yeah. we we Thank we you. should be paid by death. Yeah. But it's the gift of God. Thank you. Notice the controversy of word but. but. Right? Look at here. Now to him that it working is not the whole work of the grace. But of what? Debt. So what you're saying is that I had to work for this. Uh, uh, Peter says in Acts 10 and 35, uh, he that feareth God and worketh righteousness. Right? He that feareth God and worketh righteousness is what? Accepted by God. Mm. So what he's saying is that he has to what? E-T-H at the end of that word. Continually. Continually. Worketh righteousness. How do you work righteousness? Today. Believe you just believe, get him in doctrine. That's how you work. Because now the work of faith is what God working in you. That's the difference. That and that is the issue, right? Verse number five. But see, it's not of that. But to him that worketh not. So that means to continually not work, right? But what believe it. On him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for what? Righteousness. Did James say that? No. 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 James didn't say that. The opposite. So how is it that we have one Bible with two different two different means? Two different programs. They're both different programs. Two different programs. Huh? Two different programs. That's why we have to rightly divide the word of truth. Because all of matter of fact, Paul says he has the word of truth, and James in James chapter two says that I have the word of truth. So who's lying? Neither one of them. Why? Because you got to rightly divide the word of truth. James, when you read James 1 and 1, he's talking to the nation of Israel that's scattered abroad. Right? Paul is uh, Romans 11 and 13. I am the apostle of the Gentiles and that I magnify my office. Right? So that's what we have to see that we'll end there. Uh, we'll get to David next because now Paul, when we get to the next week, Paul is going to use David to justify and verify what he's saying, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so that's what we get there. So I, I wanted you to see that it's faith plus no works is how we're justified today. Your daily walk, that's your sanctification. So there may be consequences depending on how you sow. You either sow to the spirit or you sow to the flesh, mm -hmm. right? If you sow to the spirit, you'll reap of the spirit. Mm -hmm. If you sow to the flesh, you'll reap of the flesh. And we know the flesh is sinful. Mm -hmm. So now it's up to you what you want to reap. You can't do it by yourself, but you got to let God work in you to perform and do of his good will. Yes. Right? And all minds and hearts clear? Amen. Yes. All right. Amen. Uh, let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your goodness and your grace. Uh, we thank you for your mercy. Uh, we thank you for your uh, this time that we're able to yes. share your word. Yes. Uh, Father God, you rejoice when the saints come to fellowship together you, and that we fellowship in the word right at the bottom according to the yes. mystery of God, yes. uh, of the gospel, of the grace of God. Father God, we thank you right now for uh, uh, giving us the, the spiritual enlightenment, the eyes of understanding being yes. open, uh, the shackles and the scales have fallen off our eyes that we may see your truth. And Father God, uh, you said in your word, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Thank Father God, we Jesus. pray now for the brothers that are lost. Yes. Our brothers in Christ that are thank lost you. by the religion that's blind in this yes. world. Yes. Father yes. God, we ask right now that you deliver them, set them free according yes. to your yes. word. Yes. Because it's your word that sanctifies us. And yes. we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 We'll, uh, let's fellowship, uh, get to know one another, and then we'll come right back together in five minutes.